Hey everyone, I hope that you're doing well. And this is Whitney here talking to you today about being authentic and intuitive without the approval from others. So this is a hot topic amongst those who choose to work with me. They usually come from a place of, oh my gosh, like how do I actually step into my purpose? How do I increase my abundance? And how do I be intuitive? Because other people around me don't get me, they don't understand. And let's talk about that today. So if you're brand new to me, my name is Whitney McNeil. I'm a certified medium and spiritual mentor who loves to help spiritual and ambitious souls step into their intuitive gifts, increase their abundance and live their life purpose. And of course, connect to your spirit guides as well. So if you're joining us live, I'd love to know. And if you're watching the replay, I'd love for you to write in hashtag replay right under this video. So let's talk about how do you actually be you? right? So I remember a long time ago, someone told me that we needed to compartmentalize. And I understand that from a perspective, sometimes we need to do that in order to get a job done. But really, I truly feel like part of that purpose that I just told you that I'm here for is to really help others live their life authentically, live their intuition authentically, and attract abundance. So what happens is we end up in these places with others around us. And even though they may be supportive, they try to be supportive, they usually come from a place of fear. And so when someone finally intuitively opens up and really starts claiming their gifts and understands, wait a minute, I'm here for more. I'm here to live my purpose. And largely those who I help really want to live their purpose through their business. That's usually what happens. It's like, I can't do it part time. I want to do it full time, but rest assured it's okay. If you're just starting and you need to do it part time to get to the full time, that's completely okay. Of course, everyone's path is unique and um, I would recommend that. So to jump in full feet in. But with that being said, you start to say, gosh, I'm getting these hunches. Gosh, I'm getting these intuitive feelings, these knowings. I'm getting these dreams and I want to connect to my spirit guides. And then what ends up happening is you talk to your family or friends and they may be shaming or they may end up um, producing worry that comes out of fear. And generally speaking, they're doing this from a place of love and support, but it's not really helping you on your path because then it ends up where you are second guessing, you're questioning yourself. And I think it's fine to do that. We need our ego. But the number one thing is, listen, you are here for your reason. You're here for your purpose. And what I found so important is to find a group of like-minded people that can support you and who are going where you're going or, or who understand or maybe who have already been where you are. And the more that you talk to them, someone that you trust, the more that you can feel, wait a minute, okay, not going crazy here. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually connecting to my intuitive self. Another thing that comes up with the people around us who may just not get it, right? is when you start being authentic, when you start really living your purpose, and when you start moving into more of your level of abundance, your next level, then other people might start to get a little jealous or they don't like your new role. And so they're like, wait a minute, I don't like how you are acting. You're supposed to be in this box and I'm used to you being in this box. So what ends up happening, it's not about you changing, it's about how they feel and they have to adapt and their perception of you. So it's really not about you, it's more about them and their discomfort of changing their routine, changing uh, the, the things that they can communicate to you or how you respond to what they're communicating to you. Really, it starts to stir up their pot and it's not about you. So one of the tips I wanna share is as you start moving into more of your authenticity, more of your intuition, you might start sharing it with others and then connecting with your guides, living your purpose, and then most likely taking that purpose and starting your business or living more fully in your business. The people around you may not like the energy you're stirring up for them. They start questioning things. And then it happens when you move into, I'm gonna start my career, I'm gonna move into my career. A lot of times you might find yourself around people who don't have the entrepreneur mindset. And so they're probably saying, how are you gonna pay your bills? How's this gonna work? Is this even possible? What are you gonna do? Like, why are you doing this? 
Um, and they may start trying to give you all of their limiting beliefs, right? It's their stuff that they're imparting on you. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is sometimes when we do this, right? We, we we're like, yes, I'm, I'm finally living my purpose. I'm so excited about this. And it's kind of like you're, you're new at this. You're, you even feel a little bit vulnerable sharing. And when people start to see that you're sharing and perhaps you're feeling really abundant and you're loving it, um, they may perceive you as selfish. And let me tell you something about that. You're not selfish, you're centered in self. That's a difference, right? And so understanding that sometimes it's okay to be selfish, actually, like you're here to live your purpose in joy. And so if you're spending 90% of your day or more, or even like more than half, wait a minute, let's, why are we limiting ourselves? Let me correct my own self. If you're spending really any kind of time that you just don't love, then there's something to really look at. But I like to say, start out, if you're spending the majority of your day doing something you don't love, then it's okay to be selfish, to be like, wait a minute, I'm here, I've got my life. I completely have the ability and my right to live my life doing things that I love and I enjoy. So normally what happens is someone realizes, wait a minute, I'm spending my life living for somebody else's wishes or desires or oh, my job, I really don't love it, but I just feel kind of trapped in it. And so then you start to really kind of go, wait a minute, how can I change this? And really the goal is for you to whittle that down so that you're doing what you love all the time. And what you love doesn't always have to be work or an action. It can be just trusting, flowing, walking, taking a bath, <laughs> letting spirit communicate with you, all of those things. But what ends up happening is people might say, well, wait a minute, you're, you're being selfish. You can't make that much money in your work or you can't make money from something that comes so natural or you can't talk to spirit all day long. You know, that's that's just not not responsible. You're supposed to be doing these other things. Who knows what it is? But what ends up happening is other people give their own limiting beliefs upon you. And so anyway, my whole tip here for all these different scenarios is find a community that is supportive of you. We have a free community, by the way, and we will post that link in the comments and it's a free Facebook group and it is spiritual and ambitious for spiritual ambitious souls who really wanna live their life purpose through their career and connect to their intuition and their life purpose abundantly, but also really knowing that it's okay your values are changing. Your priorities are changing. You're tapping more into your higher self. You're tapping more into your spirit. And it's okay. It's okay that other people don't understand. And so one of the affirmations I can work with is, you know what? It's safe for me to be my authentic self. That's one that I will give to you if you want to start using that. And know that it's not your job to convince everybody around you. And it's also, I know it's not fun, but it's also okay because you're not a disappointment. Other people, if they feel disappointed, that's their stuff, right? Like if you're living your purpose and you're not intending to hurt anyone and you are shining your light really bright, they're just, there's something within them that doesn't want you to shine so bright because it causes light to be reflected into them. And then they have to look at their stuff. And so it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're acting differently. You need to come back into conformity, into this, this one way that we all know. And you're like, no, I'm here to teach you. And I'll say in that way, you're a leader for them. You're a teacher for them in some way. That doesn't mean that it's necessarily appropriate, right? To tell them all of your, all of your teachings, right? If they're not open to it, but just know in some spiritual way, you're a leader and teacher for them. And so with leaders and teachers, you don't always follow everyone else. Most likely 99% of the time, you are not going to, you're going to do your own thing. And so I know if you're out there and you're listening to this, this message is for you, no matter when you're listening to it, whether it's now or five years from now, knowing that you've got a specific light to shine and it's totally okay to live that authentically and not hide it. And I think that's the key that I'm trying to get you today is we tend to hide our light or dim it for others when in fact we're here to shine and glow. And when we do that, it draws other people who want to learn from us. It draws other people who are like us. 
to help bridge a community. And if you could imagine looking at the world and seeing all these bright lights glowing, every bright light that glows touches another light and that other light starts to glow a little bit. It might be dim at first, but then it encourages and gives someone else permission, not that you need to get permission, but you give them permission in a way to be themselves too. Because they'll look at you and say, oh my gosh, you're doing your thing. You're loving what you're doing. You're intuitive. You're connected to your spirit guides and you're moving forward and living your life purpose abundantly. I want to do that too. So this is your permission slip today, if you need one, but you really don't, to be yourself, to be authentic. No matter who's watching, no matter who's listening, understanding that it's completely okay and you're here for that reason. Not everyone's going to like you. That's okay. It's not your job to make everybody like you. Understand that you're here and you're unique and I believe it's time to claim it. So with that being said, I'd love for you to join our free group. Also, if you haven't taken the quiz, I'd love for you to do that to really determine more of your intuitive type so you can start getting more answers from your spirit guides. And when you get more answers from your spirit guides, you start really understanding, okay, I need to take XYZ step towards my life purpose. Or if you're already living your life purpose and path, well, okay, I need to take this next step to increase it, to have more opportunities. So understanding that intuitive language can be really key. And you can do that at messengerspirit.com forward slash quiz. You can also join our free Facebook group. I will leave the link as messengerspirit.com forward slash group. And don't forget to save the date. We have our intuition and abundance challenge, which is amazing. We do this at least once a year. It's coming up in May. It starts May 17th. Sign up is not out yet, but it will be coming out in a couple of weeks. Just mark it on your calendar. May 17th through the 21st, we will be having a challenge and I'm telling you some wonderful transformations come from it. I'm very excited to do this again for everyone. And we do this in celebration of Intuition Abundance Academy, which opens in May as well. All right. I will see you all next week. Bye.